What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Early upload. This video was supposed to be scheduled for the morning of Thanksgiving, but I'm sitting here and I'm kind of thinking about it. And I'm like, you know what? I bet everybody's going to be up late. They want to finalize their bets. We got NFL going on on Thanksgiving. We got a Black Friday game. We got the whole college football slate. All this, Basically, it's an amazing five straight days of betting on football. And I assume you guys kind of want to get finalized on what you think you're going to bet on. So I'm going to go ahead and upload the video a little bit on the early side. I hope you guys appreciate it. Definitely drop a like on the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Um, but guys, NFL part two, I have already put out an NFL video this week going over the three games uh, on the hall. Actually, the four games. There's the one on the Black Friday. So if you're looking for my predictions on the four games that go Thanksgiving through Black Friday, go check out the video. It's already been posted to the channel. I'll actually leave it pinned at the top of the comment section. Uh, and as well as college football, guys, do not. I'm begging you, please don't miss the college football video. Guys, I have won six straight weeks in premium in college football. And with every week, my sample size builds and I get even more locked in. We're coming off our best week yet in premium. Eight and one in college football, gaining over 11 units profit last week. Uh, some historical stuff. We're up over 30 units of profit in the last six weeks just on college football. If you were just betting $100 a pop, that's over $3,000 in your pocket and NFL, not too, too far behind it guys. Over the last five weeks of betting NFL, I'm up almost 10 units as well. And we're actually coming off a small losing week where we lost almost two units, 1.9 units. So we are in a bounce back position. I'm looking for a strong week in the NFL. In fact, I've already sent out some plays, a lot of them to the client list. If you guys want all my picks, danspicks.net. That's my website. The link is in the description of this video, or you could just go on Google, whatever, danspicks.net. You see it there at the bottom of the screen. I'll put you on the text list. I'll send you the plays that have already been sent out. Some of them do involve Thanksgiving, so do not hesitate. Do not wait for Saturday and Sunday. Get on the text list right now so you'll have some action on Friday and Thursday. And um, guys, we just keep printing money in football. Man, I wish it was a, a year-round sport, but it's not. So get it while it lasts, while I'm locked in, and uh, we'll get to college basketball and NBA playoffs when those do roll around. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. We're going to run through uh, the whole rest of the NFL slate in today's video. And of course, the whiteboard winning free picks. I already gave one out in the college video that was posted uh, earlier. And then I got one in today's video. Season to date, I sit at 17 wins and only eight losses on my official whiteboard winning free picks. Uh, one of the best winning free pick records on the internet. So hopefully you guys appreciate that. Uh, again, just double check. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel and just go ahead and click that little thumbs up emoji. It takes about a millisecond and it's free and it costs nothing and it helps me out. I would appreciate it, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. Hopefully everybody has a good holiday weekend. Um, this channel was only at a couple hundred subscribers just over a year ago. And uh, now we're rapidly approaching 10,000. Uh, maybe I'm entertaining. I know my picks are good, but, uh, you know, it, it takes a lot to grow a channel that fast on YouTube. Um, I hope that speaks volumes in terms of my talent in the sports betting industry. If you're new to the channel, I highly recommend you scroll back through some of the other sports, MLB videos, NBA playoffs last year, and college basketball last year. Get yourself kind of familiar uh, with just how much ass I kick in every single sport. Let's get to it, guys. I'm going to use FanDuel like I always do. Let me just share the screen so I can bring up these games. Let's go, man. This is such a good week. This is such a good week. This is such a good week for college, man. Rivalry week is so profitable. The angles you can get with these matchups, it's awesome. Let me uh, let me adjust this just a little tiny bit. Let me scooch this over. Uh, let's use this one. Yeah, that's good. All right, let's go. NFL. Um, ooh, look at that line movement. The uh, Bears down to nine and a half. This game was, uh, I think, a ten and a half when I first went over the games. And this money line is dropping. Remember what I said about that? I recommend you go check out that video. Uh, the other ones look about the same. That looks about the same as well. Chargers, Atlanta Falcons. This one's tough, man. Uh, if the Chargers were able to pull off that win over the Ravens, I would put my my gallbladder, my liver. I mean, I would wager like my organs on the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, so I don't love going against the Chargers, the fact that they're coming off a loss. But I'm still going to do it. Give me Atlanta, man. I'm going to take the point and a half. I'm not greedy. It's a decent teaser leg if you like teasers. Um, I'm worried about their D. I mean, Atlanta's D is just horrible. Uh, but the receivers for the Chargers, man, they can't catch. I, I Justin Herbert goes through a whole game against 
arguably the worst passing defense in the entire NFL doesn't even get a touchdown. Uh, pretty pathetic. So I don't have a lot of faith in the Chargers. Um, I don't have a lot of faith in their defense either. I think Atlanta, as bad as their defense is, they're hungry. They're still competing for their division. And uh, I expect them to win this game. I think they're going to run the ball on the ground. Uh, Bijan Robinson, the, the two-headed monster they have there down in Atlanta, should be effective on the ground. Uh, I think they're going to score through the air. And it's 1 p.m. It's not like it's prime time Kirk Cousins. We don't have to worry about any of that stuff. 1 p.m., Atlanta Falcons, short week, travel for the Chargers, a hungry team at home, getting a point and a half. I'll take the point and a half and uh, look at the over. Colts and Patriots. Well, we're at the whiteboard winning pick right off the bat. Oh, what did I do? I hit the wrong button. Let me bring it up here. There it is. NFL week four, uh, 13 Colts, man. Colts on the money line. Look, I'm not going to lay points. This is not going to be a pretty wager. This is regardless of what team you personally bet on. If you're going to bet on this game, it will be a sweat to the very end, but it's the Patriots. Are we serious? I mean, are we serious? The Patriots are bad. They're poorly coached. Mayo is an idiot. I have, I actually can't believe somebody like that was hired as a head coach in the national football league. Um, insane, terribly coached. Uh, I do like the quarterback, but that's about it. The Colts, man, they're a better football team than the Patriots. They should be able to find a way somehow, some way to win this game. I don't care that it's on the road. I don't care that they're an indoor team in new England in cold, you know, cold, whatever weather. I don't care. The Colts are a better and the Colts have looked miserable at times. Um, the Colts are beating the Patriots, at least in my opinion. I think the money line is a decent cheap price. It's just hard to believe that the Patriots are going to win another game this year. So uh, the whiteboard winning free pick is the Colts, man. Money line. Do not be laying points in a game like that. That should that should come right down to the wire. Uh, next one down here, we got the Texans and the Jags. This one, uh, this one's... This one's fairly clear to me. The line movement supports it. I like the Jags. I, I'm not saying they win. Four and a half is so many points. Do you guys understand how the the margin a team has to be up by to to not have a backdoor cover, you know, open for the underdog? This could be a ten or an eleven point margin. The Texans could be up ten points, and uh, I fully expect the Jaguars to get a backdoor cover. At the least, um, I think the Jaguars can win this game outright. I don't think it's a bad upset pick. Plus one seventy two on the money line. I, I mean, it would be it would be nice if it was over plus two hundred, right? I mean, you're you're going to take a risk on a dog. You want to at least get like a plus two two fifty. So I don't love the plus one seventy two, but I think uh, an upset here is totally totally in the cards. I'll take the four and a half points. I expect I don't know who's going to win, but I just expect it to be a field goal game, a close game. And like I said, worst case scenario, the backdoor cover should be open for the Jaguars. Um, look, I know the Texans had a good, la uh, good, good year last year. Uh, it's still the Texans. They still got a little bit of work to do on that franchise. Seattle and the Jets. Give me the, give me the Seahawks. Bad spot situationally. You'd love to bet on the Jets here. How can you bet on the Jets? They are miserable. They are terrible. Aaron is old and frail and slow. Uh, the team has bad chemistry. The coaching is pathetic. I'll take Gino. Gino doesn't like the Jets. They didn't really give him a fair shake. Um, Seahawks are a better football team. I'll take the Seahawks here. I expect I fully expect them to win the game. Money line it. Do not lay the points. Money line Seattle. That's the way I'd look in that one. Uh, we got Pittsburgh and the Bengals here. Um, I know this line looks really fishy, and a lot of people are like, what? The Bengals have no D. The team chemistry is off, blah, blah, blah. They're basically eliminated from the playoffs, not mathematically, but it, you know, it's, it's an uphill battle to say the least. Give me those bangles money line again. I know it's juicy. You can write mean comments if you want down there. Oh, why would you money line? Blah, 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 blah. Just for the sake of this video, I'm going to go with the bangles at the current pricing, uh, minus 158 money line. I think they're going to win the game. I think they're going to win, win the game for sure. Um, it's just too easy, guys. I mean, it's just it's just it's just way too easy to get a Pittsburgh team that has a way better record off of the loss divisional game. You know, this is where you typically love Mike Tomlin and this Pittsburgh team, right? A small road underdog or just a small underdog in general is is always juicy to 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 take the points with Pittsburgh. Um, I just think you're going to, I just don't think the offense can keep pace with Cincy here. I, of course I worry about Cincy's D. Um, give me Cincy, Tennessee, Washington. I'll take the Titans. Give me that six and a half. 
Uh, boy, this could be an upset too. I don't know. Levis is playing better. They still have a good D and, uh, I said it for weeks. Washington's a fraud. They will come back down to earth. That's exactly what's happened. Now, are we on a buy low spot? You could maybe argue that maybe you could consider Washington and some teasers. You basically get them down to a pick them. I don't know. I, I, I like the points of Tennessee. I expect a competitive game. Uh, maybe it's one of those classic games where it's close, but the Titans still find a way to lose, but they cover. I'll take the points. Arizona and the Vikings. Very tough game to predict here. Um, boy, the spot favors the Cardinals significantly. And um, I don't, what are we doing with the Cardinals, guys? You got to, you got to put some comments down there for me to read. What, what do we think about this Cardinals team? What do we think? Uh, I don't know. And um, Sam Darnold, you don't know if we run into red zone problems in a game like this. The pass rush, people like Buda Baker. I mean, do we trust the Vikings? Do we trust them? I don't think we do. I, I, I just don't think we can quite lay three and a half situationally against Arizona off that divisional loss. I, I got to go Cardinals. I'm going to take the three and a half. And it feels kind of like low hanging fruit. I'm a little, I'm a little worried that it feels a little too easy. Um, and I'm worried that the Cardinals are kind of a fraudulent team too. That might just go on kind of a nasty downward spiral. I'm going to take the three and a half. Hopefully they back to our cover, uh, Buccaneers and the Panthers. This is one that I don't understand guys. Um, look, I have a YouTube channel. I know I'm one of the best in the industry, if not the best. I don't think that's up for debate, but I listen to other opinions. I click on some other videos. I'm curious what people have to say. I read articles. I come across stuff when I do my research. The Panther, everyone in the world is on the Panthers. I cannot believe it. What am I missing? Somebody let me know. What am I missing? Every single person. Now, I know the betting splits. Let me bring up the splits. I know the betting, the betting splits are a little bit different. I almost can't talk I'm trying to talk about this game here. Let me bring it up. What are the splits for this one? There is a six out there as well. I mean, look, the, the money splits significantly favor the Panthers. Only 46% of bets on this spread have come on Carolina. Almost 73% of the money. Definitely some sharp action on Carolina. Um, people are definitely... <sighs> What am I missing here? It's still the Carolina Panthers. All, all of a sudden, we're just going to snap our fingers and the Carolina Panthers are a competitive football team. I think the Chiefs were half asleep. I'm going to lay the five and a half of the Bucks. I, I just, look, I get it. They had a cupcake win against the Giants, kind of a fraudulent win. Their defense is still horrendous. Their coach, Bowles, one of the worst in the NFL, in my opinion. Really, really low IQ coach. We have a little bit of hope, a little bit of life. Pan Panthers are healthier. They're the Carolina Panthers. Did we all forget this team is really bad and their defense is terrible? I don't think they can keep pace. I don't care about the money splits. I'm laying the points with the Bucks. Forget it. Rams, Saints, tough. Tough, tough, tough prediction here. Give me the Rams. Rams on the money line. Another juiced money line. I don't want to lay points with this Rams team. God, they've got to be the better team. They've got to be the better team. Their competition lately, although the games looked ugly and Stafford at times just looks pathetic and it looks like their offensive line, you know, is a bunch of high schoolers. They played really, really good competition recently. Um, the Saints, I mean, they still kind of have this new coach. They still got some moving parts. They do have some X factors like Taysom Hill and there's some guys I like, and it's one of the better home field advantages in the NFL. It's kind of an underrated home field advantage. That defense stinks. I think I think the O-line does a little bit better here. I think Stafford has a little bit more time. I think the receiving core um, is going to do well here. I just think offensively it's going to be hard for the Saints to keep up. One more time, I'm going to trust Stafford. God, they've looked so bad lately. Hopefully Sean McVay has a good game plan here. I'm going to go Rams. Rams on the money line. They got to figure out a way to get this done. They got better players. Eagles, Ravens. Um, I think the injuries are significant for the Eagles, man. You know, losing Graham to the tricep injury. One more guy that I forgot as well on defense. Maybe another corner as well. Uh, this is a bad matchup for the Eagles, in my opinion. What do the Eagles like to do? 
run over everybody. Saquon is an absolute monster. They have a good O-line, but the Ravens have a good running defense. Uh, the only concern here is Baltimore played on Monday. It's a short week. You could say maybe the travel in the short week for the Ravens kind of offsets it because at least they're at home and, you know, the Eagles are on the road. But the Eagles are a good road team as well. So the spot favors the Eagles a little bit. Momentum, I think, favors the Eagles as well. I mean, the Ravens were all caught up in the Harbaugh thing and, you know, they played a, a, a pretty competitive game. Look, at the end of the day, I really want to see the the injury report. I got to know about Devontae Smith. I have to know about him. Um, I, I I don't trust. I, I, I don't like the conflicting styles. I like the ability for the Ravens to possibly get some stops against the run. And if the run doesn't work for the Eagles, they melt down. They melt. Jalen Hurts is not a good quarterback. We have a significant edge at the most important important position on the field. Um, you could argue we have a little bit of a coaching edge as well. I think Harbaugh is better than Sirianni, although he does some questionable things. Um, home field, Lamar. Eagles losing some guys to injury. Man, I'm going to lay it. I'm going to lay the full field goal here. 164 is a little too steep to go money line. I'm going to lay the three with Baltimore. I think they're the better team. I think they can actually kind of slow down Barclay a little bit. Um, and if they do that, I really think that Eagles defense uh, or the Eagles offense could could look like a stick in the mud. I really do. I'm going to go Ravens. 49ers, Bills, another one. I, I need an injury report. And uh, right now, I just I just can't give you a, a full confirmation about Purdy and some of these other players. If certain players are a go for the Niners, then this is a beautiful price. And I'll be on San Francisco. Um, if we get Purdy, you know, if we get some of these guys playing for San Fran, they're desperate, and that's still a good roster. I'll take the points all day long. Uh, if they're out, you got to go Buffalo. So injury dependent on that one. And then Monday night, Cleveland and Denver. <sighs> what a weird number, five and a half. I'm going to go. Uh... Oh, man, five and a half. Browns, I mean, horrible spot for the Browns. They're just doing snow angels after they beat Pittsburgh in a crazy one. Um. Browns and the Broncos, five and a half. Two, two borderline untrustworthy quarterbacks. I think I'm going to take the points. I think Denver's going to maybe squeak out of there with a close one. Um, after what Miles Garrett said to all his talk about how he's so good on the D-line and the best in the NFL, he's got to back it up. You can't say that and then come in flat the next week. If that pass rush and defense makes life hard for, for Bo Nix. We could see some mistakes out of a, a young quarterback. Jameis, he's always a wild card, but he's capable. Um, I'm going to go Browns. I'm going to take the five and a half points with the Browns there. And I, I think I like the under in that game too, but that's a low total. So a little bit uh, concerning with that. But that's it, guys. There you go. NFL week 13. It is a big one. There's some awesome games in there. There's probably half a dozen really, really, really good games. And, and most of the better games are actually on the holidays, in my opinion. Like I said, friendly reminder, I have action on Thanksgiving. Get my picks. You see the numbers on the bottom of the screen. Undeniably, for the last two months, I have been printing money in football. Once you go on the text list, you get every bet I make, whether it's going to be on college, pros, if I decide to throw some college basketball in the mix, You'll get them. You'll be on the text list. Get the picks. Danspicks.net. Link in the description. Let me know your favorite bets in the comment section below. See you in the next video.